Well, hello, YouTubians. Welcome back to the Barbecue Trucker. Okay, let's uh, discuss just a few things, and then I'm going to try to put some pictures uh, at the end of this video if I can figure out how to do. Like I say, I'm really new at this, and I'm still learning. So let's just, uh, first of all, I want to talk. Oh, hang on a second. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, hey, let me give out a shout out uh, here to one of my great nephews, is Andrew. Andrew. My channel name is Python Drew Vlogs 2. Say that again. Python Drew Vlogs 2. Python what rocks? Python Drew Vlogs. Python Drew Rocks 2. Vlogs. Python do blah, 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 blah. Python Drew Vlogs 2. Yes. That's his channel. Y'all check it out. Might be pretty interesting. Okay, uh, today I did talk with a recruiter from uh, Maverick. Now, as most of y'all know from the previous videos, I've narrowed my search down to two companies. Uh, Maverick Transportation LLC out of North Little Rock, Arkansas, and Swift out of everywhere. <laughs> Actually, Phoenix, Arizona. But, uh, it was kind of a tough decision, really, in a way. Uh, in a way, it wasn't. Uh, Maverick just offers a little bit better pay and they're a smaller company uh, I don't they've got regional opportunities in my area I'm gonna be out of the Dallas Fort Worth area I'm living in Central Texas now but I'm gonna move back up there when I go to work uh, in any way they do have regional and all that but I'm not really I'm interested in getting out there and running like my new good friend Brian Hall uh, check his channel out Brian Hall B-R-Y-A-N Hall H-A-L-L -L, uh, like I've said before, the most upbeat guy I've ever seen in my life. I really, really like this guy. and uh, But I've seen a lot of his videos and uh, uh, other ones by uh, another man named Neil Shane Otts, O-T-T-S. Check out their channels. It's very informational if you may be considering going to work flatbedding. I didn't think I'd ever really want a flatbed again because I did it back in the early 90s and all. But uh, you know something? The only part about flatbedding that I really see as a downfall or not even really a downfall, but that, you know, makes it less, made me not want to do it at first was, you know, having to tarp and all that. But you know something, uh, the way Maverick trains you to tarp, it's as easy as it can be done. And, uh, you're going to need, you know, you need that kind of exercise anyway. You get paid for it. Probably not a whole bunch, but so what? You're getting paid. And, uh, it's just the way Maverick, seems to treat their employees uh i mean like little little things it's, a, it's some of the little things like a passenger program at no cost to the driver most companies you have to pay weekly for insurance for a rider uh they have the little i don't know what they're called but the little wi-fi internet thing that works off the satellite that you can get from them i don't know how many companies have that uh uh but uh, I know what Maverick does, and for like $13 a week or $13 a month, I don't remember which that is, uh, you can have Wi-Fi anywhere you go in your truck, which, you know, that works great for when you're stopping in rest areas and whatnot. Most truck stops have Wi-Fi. But uh, it's just it just everyone, I've talked to two different recruiters uh, with, uh, with Maverick, and some of the nicest people I've ever talked to, and... So as long as I can get hired on with Maverick, that's where I'm going. If I can't, I'll go to Swift, uh, which brings up a point of one thing I wanted to talk about. You always hear these people talking bad about Swift. They're a crap company. Well, they're not. Uh, as far as mega carriers go, they're probably the best of the mega carriers, and they're one of the largest, if not the largest. Uh, you know, advantages that you'd have is uh, they have freight running everywhere. You can pretty much pick where you want to run. They have a whole bunch of regional and dedicated accounts if you want to be home all, you know a lot uh really worth checking them out i would you know if you're interested in flatbedding uh like i say if you're in their hiring area uh maverick has regional runs where you're home practically every weekend some of them you're home it said daily uh but i'm not interested in that i'm interested in going otr over the road and i'm gonna do like brian i'm gonna get out there and run for three or four months straight i I've been sitting at home for the last 
few years. I worked at Six Flags. I'm going to put some pictures up on the end if I can get it to work at Six Flags. Uh, I ran in a, excuse me, a steam locomotive. That was wonderful, by the way. Best job I've ever had. Uh, I didn't consider it a job. I, mean, I guess it was a job I didn't consider it work because it was so much fun. Uh, but anyway, uh, those are my choices. But what I wanted to talk about is listening to all the crap that you're going to hear when you get out there on the road. There's not everybody by far. And so, you know, some people may get your feathers ruffled. But if you get your feather ruffled, then I guess you're one that I'm talking about. They sit there and talk. They know everything in the world. They sit there and talk all oh, this crap. Oh, Swift sucks. You know, Swift, they didn't run me. Uh, what not. I've, had, I've seen one guy that put a video that uh, Maverick was king of the 34-hour restart. Well, you know something? If you need a 34-hour restart, you only need it if you're running hard. And this guy was talking that he just wasn't getting to run enough. He was sitting too much. And a lot of that is how you run when you're out there. If uh, you don't, you know, if you get really close to your appointment times or be late on some loads or whatever, you're hanging around the truck stops, you just don't sleep too much or whatever, you don't feel like running the miles, well, then, you know, think about it if you're a dispatcher for a trucking company and you've got, you know, a guy that will, he's just like Brian Hall says, if you're on time, you're late. If you're early, you're on time. If you're real early, then all right. Well, that's the way I look at it. I've always the way I've done it. When you get that load, I go as hard as I can get legally to uh, get to my next stop. If I'm there a day or two early, I'll find a way to either T-call it, that means drop it, and someone else will deliver it. Or, you know, I'll, I'll call the company and take, talk them into taking the load. And if they absolutely won't, then, you know, there's a few that you may have to sit and wait for the load time, but you're there. And you're always early. Early is on time. You run like that, and then and then you've got this guy who's late on a couple or barely makes his appointments a couple of times, grabs about a short run when he didn't like it. You know, if I get a short run, I'm going to get there, get it done, get it delivered, and get my next one. No big deal. Uh, but a lot of people, they just gripe about that. You know, I'm not, I want a 1,000-mile run every time and all. Well, that's just not going to happen every time. It'll happen sometimes, a lot of times. But uh, anyway, you're that dispatcher, and you've got two drivers like that, one that runs hard and is always early and one who barely makes it. Which one's going to get the better loads? Think about it. So a lot of these people that are sitting there griping, it's, they've caused their own problems. Uh, you know, when they, if they'd have been out there running, uh, hang on just a second. Turn that light off, please, sir. Thank you. Sorry. The bathroom and your bedroom. You're not in there. Uh, sorry about that, y'all. Uh, I had to do a little... Uncling. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, like I say, it's a lot of, it's, you get out what you put into it a lot of times. And so a lot of these people that are sitting there griping and bitching about this, griping and moaning about that. If you let yourself get caught up in it, next thing you know, you're depressed. You're down. You don't want to be out there. When if you wouldn't even listen to them, I just kind of chuckle. I'd sit there and just kind of chuckle under my breath. And uh, listen to all the bullshit because, oh, I'm sorry. I think that's the first cuss word I've said in one of these videos. Oh, well, anyway, the crap. And uh, the next thing you know, you're depressed. So I just, I don't, I don't listen to it. And, and another thing, you'll hear all the, well, look at all the tr Swift trucks. This truck truck was in there. You'll see videos. Swift truck had a wreck. Swift truck turned over. Swift truck jackknife. Whatever. Well. One of the reasons why you see a lot more of those videos is because they have a lot more trucks. I mean, you do your percentages. It's it's like someone saying, oh, there's there's just too many accidents in Texas. Texas has too many accidents, and they're comparing it to the accidents that are in New Hampshire. Well, you got, you know, 100 times the amount of people in cars. Of course there's going to be more. Same way with Swift. Uh, I just, people that down Swift, now don't get me wrong. I'm sure there's people that's been there. That something happened and something didn't go their way or whatnot. And it was probably Swift's fault. But, uh, you know, nobody's perfect. No company's perfect. But from everything I've seen, uh, I think Swift is an excellent, excellent alternative. If it doesn't, for some reason, work out at Maverick. And 
I really think it will. And oh, by the way, I got to give a shout out to a Swift driver. Uh, she, uh, she, she was, that's another thing that it, and most companies are probably like this. I don't know, but she had a uh, death in the family and, uh, they tried and scram to scramble and get her straight load. She was out in California, get her straight loads back to Houston. There was just no way to get her there in time. So what they did was they had her take her load that she was under to a yard and T call it, drop it, someone else will deliver it. And, uh, they paid for her a car to the, uh, airport and a round trip plane ticket to go home and deal with the uh, problems that just with the, you know the death in her family and then she's got the you know it's a round trip and then to get back and pick up her truck and then she can carry on that's awesome all i gotta say is way to go swift mm -hmm. uh and i know i'm gonna have haters on this that are gonna if they i don't have many people watching but i'm trying to get it out there and uh um Hang on just a second. A anyway, uh, the uh, the girl is a Texas mother trucker, and in her last video, she blew a kiss to everybody. So there you go, back, darling. I sure like watching your videos. My thoughts and prayers are with you and your family. And uh, I'll be glad to see you back out on the road again when you get all this taken care of. Anyway, uh, like I say, uh, all the crap you hear, uh, a lot of it's not true, is which is what I'm trying to say. And I'll do the investigating yourself. Talk to these people. Swift is not a bad company to go to. As a matter of fact, like I say, they're my second company. I was going to kind of look into Millis Transfer, which is listed by uh, Trucking Answers as uh, doing it the right way. Uh, but unfortunately, Millis Transfer was bought out yesterday by Heartland Express. It was probably one of the crap companies of the week. And uh, uh, it's just that killed that. But uh, anyway, like I say, uh, I, I don't think I'll have a problem getting on with uh, Maverick. And uh, you know what was really wild? I was talking to the recruiter today, and he goes, he goes I've got two correspondences from you. And I, I said, excuse me? He goes, yeah, back in 2004, you called and inquired about a job at Maverick, but I, I don't have anything else. And, you, know, you, you, you happen to know why you didn't come? And I said, well, to be honest with you, I don't even remember uh, inquiring. But so, no, I don't I don't remember why. Probably family reason or whatnot. I don't know. But but anyway, uh, so their process of my application, I just, uh, they just needed a, another document from me, which I uh, will email them tonight. And we're getting the ball rolling. Like I say, I'm not coming out until January. Uh, I've got prior commitments with some... Uh, competition cook-offs and uh some catering jobs that i've already either been paid for or at least had half down paid for and uh, that's going to cover me into december just the first part of december but i don't want to get started in december and then have the break for christmas and then have to come back home and then go back and start it all back over you know not or pick up where you left off i just want to start in around so january as, as early in january as i can get in that's what i'm going to do uh i had was really thinking about going to a truck driving school down here and uh, going ahead and getting my CDL before I go there, which I still may do. But they have an awesome CDL school at Maverick. And if I'm going to go to Maverick, I, I kind of have the mentality of why don't I just start and do it the Maverick way from the start? Because it just seems like from the videos I've seen and from other drivers I've heard talking that Maverick's doing it the right way. Okay, enough about Maverick. And, uh, and like I say, the most important thing that I wanted to stress in this video is judge everything by its own merit, not by what other people say about it, good or bad. Uh, you know, you can form your own opinion about everything. Uh, are there good Are there good things about Swift? Yes, a lot of good things. Are there bad things about them? Probably. The pay is not near as good as what Maverick is, but I mean, on a lot of the dedicated runs or regional runs, and even after you've I think been with them for like six months. You're up to 41 or 42 cents a mile, which is not great, but not bad. About 10 cents a mile less than what you're going to start out at Maverick. Um, and there's all incentive bonuses at both companies and all that. But just do your investigation. Shoot me an email. K-E-N-T-C-A-M-B-L at gmail.com. That's K-E-N-T-C-A-M-B-L at gmail.com. 
And I'll try to answer any question that you get, or at least I'll find the answer uh, if I don't know it. So I'm going to cut this off because I want to try to put some pictures on the end. I, if, if you don't see any pictures on the end of this video, it means I did not figure it out. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to try to figure it out. And uh, I'm going to put some pictures of uh, working at Six Flags with, with running a fully, and maybe some few little short videos uh, running a uh, fully authentic steam locomotive. And I'll put a few barbecue pictures on there. So uh, until next time, enjoy the pictures and videos at the end. And never forget, do not take a sleeping pill and a laxative at the same time. All right, this is a barbecue trucker out. Oh, one more thing I gotta put. I gotta say this every time. And and I don't care if you're tired of hearing me say it. I don't really don't care. Make sure to thank your, your military when you see them. Make sure that you thank your police officers, your firefighters, your EMTs. They're out there working for us. Without them, I wouldn't be able to make this video. You wouldn't be able to be sitting there watching it and all. So please, thank you to all of the first responders, to all of the military. And yes, I include tow truck drivers in the first responders. Move over if they're on the side of the road doing something. Get over anyway if there's a vehicle on the side of the road if you can. If you can't, slow down, please. Okay, let's make it a safer world out there for everybody. Uh, you see someone with a frown, try to give them your smile. This is a Barbecue Trucker, and we'll see you in the next video. Listen to this big beauty being fired up. Starting to get steam come out from different spots.